Now comes my topic, as you can see on this paper, it's talking about Hezbollah Bahar. Hezbollah Bahar. What is Hezbollah Bahar? What it means? Where it comes from? What's the purpose of it? Why, it, why does it become so important? And why are, why are we talking about it now? As Mawlana Tassin also informed you about the etikaf that was done for Hezbollah Bahar. His means series of du'as. His means series of du'as. You would find different his bin Nabawiya and then you would find his bin Azam. So series of du'as. Bahar means ocean. Series of du'as that has a relationship with the ocean. Why? So these du'as, they come from a very renowned sheikh, Abul Hassan Shazli rahimahullah ta'ala. And he was from Egypt. He was from Cairo. And he was a very prominent uh, Sufi scholar and, um, and he is also the founder of a Sufi order, Shazali. Right? There is like this orders Qadriya, Naqshbandiya, Sorvardiya, Chishtiya. They are uh, prominent in the subcontinent area, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. But in Arab world, Shazali order is very prominent. So he is the founder of the Shazali order, Abu Hassan Shazali. He one time, he had a dream or he had inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he told his disciples, his muridin, that I have orders from Allah to make hajj. So find a carrier, find a ship, find a vessel. So by that time it was such a delay, people who had to leave for hajj that had already left. So when the people came out, his disciples, his followers, they came out to look for a ship, they didn't find any. And they found, finally found a ship and the captain of the ship was an old Christian man. So there was no other choice, but they hired him. So everyone, when they boarded on the ship, so it was the captain, that old Christian man, and his two sons, who were Christian, the sheikh himself, and his disciples who wanted to go for Hajj. Back in the days, it would go in the direction of the wind. So they started the journey, a few days went by, two, three days, it directed itself in the direction of uh, Haramain and then in the middle the winds shifted they were not too far from Cairo the winds shifted so that now it's gonna come back so what do you do instead of coming back and increasing the length of their journey the captain he put the anchor down and he stopped the ship then and waited for the favorable winds so that we can go in the direction of the Haramain so as this is happening Time is going by. One day goes by, two days. Seven days go by. And now people are starting making noises. They're making whispers. They're making, they're getting confused and they're putting doubts in the heart. You think this is a sheikh who has been commanded by Allah? He's a waliullah who's been commanded by Allah to make hajj as if, you know, how is it real? So many days and the winds have no uh, indication they're ever going to shift. It's all against the direction of the harman and the time of the hajj is so near. How are we going to go for Hajj? So when these things came to in the attention of the Sheikh, he got hurt by the, and his feelings were hurt. You know, this is a human nature. When people talk ill about you, uh, it hurts the feelings. But Sheikh, he became very tolerant and uh, he went for a Qailula. You know what a Qailula is? You take a 15, 20 minute nap, 30 minute nap after the lunch. On the seventh day, he went for a Qailula and this Qailula, he saw a dream in which he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself taught him these series of du'as. And he woke up from the qailula and he told the captain to lift the anchors. And he said that I'm going to recite the du'as and as a result this is going to travel in the direction of the haram. So the captain insisted, no we cannot lift it because if we lift the anchors it's going to go back to Cairo. And the Shaykh said it again, and the third time Shaykh said, Do not put any doubts of the conditions. Just lift the anchors as I say. And the Shaykh started reciting the du'as of the Hizbul Bahar that was taught to him by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to everyone's surprise, the wind shifted so quickly and with such speed that they were not able to lift the anchors, it broke the ropes. And the ship started moving in the, in the direction of the Haramain. This was the wonders. This was one of the wonders that took place and it was so quick, it was swift, but yet very comfortable that it's not so bumpy and jumping people, it's not hurtful for the uh, people around the ship and it made it for the Hajj. 
now people are, you know, they, as they are always, you know, they're sorry for their um, bad comments. Like even today, people say bad comments towards the shayukh, and when the things open up, uh, and then uh, they f feel sorry for what they have commented on. So these are the duas, and the shaykh, he taught these duas to his disciples, and from that time, it has been transferred among the shayukh, and the shayukh have practiced uh, reading these duas, and they have found many benefits. It has many benefits. It has protection. It has prevention. It has protection from the jinnad, from the bad spells, uh, spells from magic. Uh, if your works are stuck, they, uh, you know, they become better. And it has marvelous benefits. Not only the benefits of the akhirah, you know, the spiritual elevation is one big thing. Yes, spiritual elevation it has a big effect in the spiritual elevation too. But in the things of this dunya, in the works of this dunya, it has many, many benefits. So, when you do this amal, you want to make this effective, you have to give a zakat. What is this zakat? Zakat means that you become used to this amal, right? So, the shayu have instructed many instructions from uh, Shah Muhaddis uh, Delvi, rahmatullah alayhi, and... Uh, and then uh, uh, Hazrat Thanvi rahimahumullah ta'ala, the, these shuyukh, they have ins given instructions how to do the amal of Hezbul Bahar so that it becomes effective in your lives. And then this year we were able to do it from Tariqa Muniria. Tariqa Muniria means that from our Shaykh, from our mentor, Pire Tariqa Rahbari Shariat, Hazrat Maulana Mufti Munir Ahmad Damad Barkatumul Aliyah. With his guidance, we were, he, he, uh, he made a Tariqa. And with that tariqah we all followed and alhamdulillah there were people from different parts of the world. They were from Europe, different states in the United States, from Canada, from Maryland. There were brothers and they all benefited. They all benefited uh, to whatever extent they could, right? Everybody at least saw some good dreams. Some people saw some uh, muakkilat, some people saw some dreams, some people uh, saw their things that they were not, they were stuck for years, right? They got uh, the results on those, uh, um, uh, their, their stuff that was stuck for years in their, uh, in their lives. So it has many, many benefits. So that amal is usually done in the month of Safar, 6th, 7th and 8th of Safar. People fast and then these duas are read in a certain way. So this was my topic of Hizbul Bahar, how this was done, how it is very effective. And uh, the brothers who have, who have, are in, uh, eager to do it, they can do it every month under the tariqah muniriya. You know, there are some other tariqah that only require you to do it in this month of Safar, but people have done in abundance. A lot of people have done. Here in this masjid, there was like 20 people, but in Pakistan, India, under the uh, tariqah muniriya, under the tawajjuhat and the duas of Hazrat Shaykh, there are many, many hundreds of people who finished this amal, and they would, inshallah, find the benefits of this amal. So this is beneficial for you, your families, and it's a very strong amal. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to benefit from these duas that came directly from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Shaykh Abul Hassan Shazli rahimahumullah ta'ala.